Today I'm going to show you guys some really cool stuff that I wish I would have had when I built my first Les Paul. Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. So, you know, I have been building guitars since 1989. And the very first thing I tried to do when I was in my high school shop class <laughs> was build a Les Paul. Obviously, that was a bad idea. Um, I didn't attempt to build a Les Paul style um, uh, electric guitar until many, many years later. And I did exactly what uh, you guys probably know what I'm going to say. You know, you go to the forums and you look at all the stuff and then these guys make all these jigs and stuff and print all these deals out. I still have a bunch of those original templates floating around somewhere in the shop. But I want to show you guys a couple of really, really neat things. And if you want to build a Les Paul, let me just make it easy for you. Just buy this stuff and make it easy on you. Um, if you want to build a guitar that's a Les Paul style guitar with us, I've got you covered there too. Uh, we offer a, um, I think we're calling it build a classic set neck carved top option. And um, guys, it's gonna be great. So I wanna show you a couple of really, really neat things though, first and foremost. And I'm gonna actually start working on one so you get an idea of how I would do it in my shop. And I'll probably give you some uh, little hints on the way so if you don't have all the same tools that I do, you can still make something cool. Or better yet, you can come out to my shop and you can build one with me. So, all right, let's get down to business. The first thing that I wanna talk to you guys about is um, the template sets from Steve at Maximum Guitar Works. Now, uh, he calls that his, uh, his Leslie template. And so here's one, I've got a pile of templates from Steve here. So here's one here, this is a P90. Um, here's a neck one. As you can see, this has the Gibson style um, long tenon. Here's a nut, that was a paddle head. Here's one with the Gibson style headstock. Here is uh, the same template with a double cutaway. Here is a tem template with no cutaway. Here's one that does the, uh, um, uh, the humbucker, uh, uh, humbucker screw deal. I mean, you hear, here's a, here's a neck template that is just a straight um, uh, tenon like, like we use. Here is, uh, uh, you know, the um, uh, wiring race. There's another neck one. Here's a humbucker one. Here's a double cutaway one. Here's a wiring channel with the, um, the big, the big uh, mortise in it. But what I want you guys to see, if you haven't used Steve's templates before, or if you're just watching a video uh, that I've done for the first time, it's this hole right here and this hole right here. That is the key to Steve's setup. He calls it his off-body alignment pins. I call them the uh, OBAs. And um, you would think that Steve would have called them OBAs too since he's a military guy. But, um, but he, calls, he likes to say the whole word, off-body alignment pins. Anyway. You will notice that these pins here are the same as these pins here, and they're the same as these pins here, and they're the same as these pins here, and these pins here. You guys getting the idea? The cool thing is you don't have to put a center line on there and kind of, you know, try to try to get everything to line up. The pins make it easy for you. And what I'm, what, what I'm about to show you after we get a few of these things out of the way is gonna blow your mind and you're gonna go, oh man, I totally need those templates too. So anyway, um, so what I've got here is I've got a couple of pieces of um, mahogany that I got from my buddies, Dan and Calvin at Tonewood Experts. These are um, a hundred mahogany uh, blanks. They're a little over one and three quarter. I'm going to size them to one and three quarter. I'm going to drill the off body alignment pins and I'm going to do a couple of the things that I, I like to have done before I glue the tops on. One is the wiring race. One is the, uh, you know, the, um, uh, we'll do the, the, the space for the, um, uh, uh, for the switch and for the, the four controls. 
And uh, I'm going to do one lefty and one righty. And uh, because Caesar from Los Lobos is getting one of these. Um, so anyway, uh, we're going to do that first. And then I'm going to show you something that's going to make you go. Uh, but anyway, so let's, let's get these guys sized and uh, get some holes in them. And we'll go from there and uh, um, prepare to be blown away. <laughs> All right, I've got my blanks are thickness. They're just under one and three quarters now, which is where I want them to be. Um, uh, and they're flat on this side and this side. So now I'm gonna draw a center line here. Uh, let's see, it looks like this middle piece is about four and seven eighths. So, you know what? I don't know what half of four and seven eighths is. So I'm gonna go the old school way. I'm gonna do it in millimeters here. 124 millimeters, that's 62 millimeters, is half, all right? So we'll, uh, we'll get our center line on here. This is, uh, these are three piece blanks. So we wanna get our center line kind of in the center of the, uh, of the centerpiece of mahogany. And, you know, I mean, it's not gonna matter a whole lot. So this is gonna be one. Uh, Caesars is getting a, um, uh, he's doing all gold on his. So I think we're gonna have this one be the lefty. Um, okay. So what we need to do is now we're going to line up the, um, the center line that we just drew and we are going to put some double stick tape on this template and we're going to drill through here and here and those are going to be the holes we use for everything from here on out so and we're going to repeat the process on this next one okay now i just remember that the important thing to remember when you're doing a lefty is that the les paul isn't 100 percent symmetrical that is to say this this contour here isn't precisely the same as on the, uh, the, the starboard side and the port side aren't exactly uh, uh, the same. So because this is a lefty, I want to make sure that I do it like this, okay? So it, I have to remember that the, um, the template side gets, um, so this is, this is going to be the top here. Let's write it on there. Top. Let's also write that this is a left hand. Okay, because Steve's templates are switch-o changeable, you can do that. You just got to remember which is which. Okay, so um, so I'm going to put my um, my double stick adhesive on here. And of course, this is way easier to use this double stick tape that we get from Taylor Toolworks than it is to use super glue and masking tape. That is just, what, that's what you do when you don't have any of the other stuff, when you don't have the real thing. Okay, all right, so that looks pretty good. So we'll get this one, uh, uh, this one's ready to go. We'll take it over to the drill press, but let's do the other one first. Let's look and see which one we want to be our top. I think I want this to be the top because see all these, all these little, little knots here. We're gonna, um, uh, we're gonna have this be the top because this is the glue side, right? Glue side. Okay, so let's find our, uh, it's about the same, 62. Okay, then I already have, already have a template here for this one. Now, I'm not gonna make a double cutaway, but um, again, because Steve's templates are all the same, you can use whichever one you want at whichever time you want. So like, for example, if you have 
you want to do like one P90 and, and a humbucker, you can if you want to do, like I say, a double cutaway, something like that. So anyway, um, it's all going to make sense here in a second. All right, so now I'm going to go drill some quarter inch holes here and here on this one and the other one. And uh, then we're going to get started. Now you might be wondering why there's a hole for an off-body alignment pin here. Well, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but your old buddy Uncle Matt asked Steve to put them here because the original one was right here, which would have meant I couldn't do the super awesome no cutaway Les Paul. Um, I also like to do, uh, when, I, when we grind these, these off-body alignment pins off, I think it's easier to do an inside contour than it is an outside contour. So, all right, we're gonna drill through this a quarter inch bit. And because Steve uses drill bushings in his template sets, I'm not worried about my drill um, hogging out and, uh, and wallering out my template. Alright, now we'll do the lefty. drilled for my OBAs, OBPs, um, off-body alignment, yeah, my, my off-body alignment pins. So this one is the left hand, um, and this is the glue side. And I'm going to actually trace around the body so that I don't get it totally mixed up later. I mean, I realize that I've got a bunch of notes on here and I have a bunch of, um, uh, and I have these two, two pinholes here that will remind me, but um, yeah, I, I still wanna just trace around it because it makes life easier, okay? All right, so that can come off. <coughs> I think what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm gonna put my wiring race in, and I'm also gonna put my, um, uh, my, uh, control cavities and things like that in here, but uh, but let's just go ahead and get this guy, get it off for now. Okay, now this one here has, as you can see, the um, um, the double cutaway template on it. Since I'm not going to be using the double cutaway template, and since I want to draw around the um, the template, and since I want to show you guys how easy it is to switch these pins back and forth. I'm actually going to put this template on and line up the two pin holes with a couple of quarter inch dowel pins. Okay, and here's a quarter inch punch. I'm just gonna put that in there to, uh, to hold everything in place and I'm going to draw around the perimeter. And as you can imagine, having a uh, Having the ability to swap templates back and forth is a really cool thing. Okay. Okay, there we go. Let's make a note on this one. This is a right hand. Okay. So yeah, so now what I want to do is I want to put my, uh, my wiring race in here and I also want to, um, to put my, um, I don't want to use this, this exact um, routing template for controls because this is for a double cutaway, which means I don't have, I don't have a, a switch up here on this one. So um, let's go ahead and start with the wiring race because uh, if, if that's all we do, that would actually work just fine. But uh, so let's, let's do that one on both these first. Fortunately for me, I have two wiring race templates, which means I can put one on the, um, uh, on the right hand and one on the left hand, and then I can just do them both at the same time.
Since I'm gonna be using my pin router, I'm gonna have my, uh, my template on the bottom and my pin is gonna poke through the other side. So I want to have these be upside down. Okay, I've got a half inch cutter in my pin router and I've got a half inch pin in my pin router, which means that if I do this wiring race uh, in that setup, it'll be exactly like it is on the template. But I actually like my wiring race to be a little bit bigger sometimes, so I'm gonna put a 3 8 pin in my, um, in my table and that's gonna mean that my, my wiring uh, race is gonna be a little bit wider. So it's gonna allow me to, uh, to go, I think it'll be about 5 eighths now, since I've got 1 8 of an inch less pin. Wanna make sure we get it in the right slot here. That looks good. So in the off chance that I was confusing you guys when I put the template on the bottom, <laughs> you can see now, that my wiring race matches my, uh, my body outline, which I very cunningly drew on the top here. Um, like I said, I wanted it to be a little wider than the, uh, than the race is on the template. So I just slid a different size pin in there. Um, I went down probably about three quarters of an inch deep. That's deeper than I need to go, but uh, it's not gonna hurt anything uh, to have it be a little bit deeper. Um, so anyway, that looks, that looks pretty good. Let's do the other one. All right, so since uh, this thickness uh, body is the same as the previous one, I was able to just use exactly the same template flipped upside down because it's a lefty. So. Um, really, this is actually going to be exactly the same guitar, uh, only one's going to be left-handed. So, um, we could actually go ahead and glue the maple on right now, but I think what I want to do instead is um, uh, put some of the recesses in here. I haven't decided yet. I'm going to think about it for a second. Okay, I've thought about it, and I'm going to go ahead and put my uh, control cavity um, uh, cavities in here. One for the switch and one for the potentiometer. All right, so that should give you guys a pretty decent idea of what this is gonna look like underneath the maple top <laughs> that we're gonna glue on here later in the video. Um, of course, if you don't have a pin router, you can uh, use this template on the top and use a bearing bit, just like uh, you would with a, you know, a regular hand router. You don't have to have a pin router to use Steve's templates. Um, you can put this on and do everything that I have been doing with a bearing bit. Um, if I were you, I would do this uh, switch cavity and the control cavity for the potentiometers first. That way you, have, uh, you can pull the template and use the, uh, the passes that you made initially as the template for the rest of the way down and you don't have to worry about the wiring race and put the wiring race in second. Um, but it's up to you. So anyway, um, I, I, like doing, uh, I like doing this but, uh, before we get to any of the top glued on because it just, it, it's, uh, it's just going to make everything cleaner and especially the wiring race, it's uh, way better than, than, uh, than drilling a hole. The other cool thing about using uh, the old school tools like a hand router or a pin router is it gives you an idea of what those guys back in the 50s had to kind of go through to make this kind of guitar. You know, um, nowadays at Gibson and lots of other places, in fact most other places, they have a CNC program and they go boop and it does all this for them. Um, now there's anything wrong with that, but I kind of like to be connected to the, uh, the way the old school guys did it. So um, what I'm gonna do next is I'm actually going to cut this out and, uh, and trim it off with my, uh, my table router. I don't like to go all the way through with the pin router because, um, well, I just don't. 
The other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, since I'm, since I'm doing it all anyway, I might as well put my control cavity covers on. I could probably put the control cavity covers on and go all the way through to the other side. Um, if I did it exactly perfectly right, that would be one way to go. But you can imagine that if I'm, if I'm you know, not exactly uh, uh, deep enough on my, uh, on my control cavities, then that's not gonna work. So anyway, we're gonna get the uh, lefty to this same stage and then we'll go over to the pin router, the pin router, the table router, and we'll make this look nice and then we'll do the, um, uh, then we will do the control cavity covers. All right, two more things before I show you guys something really, really cool. And that is I'm going to go all the way through, that is to say incise my, um, my control cavities on both and uh, go all the way through. First, I'm going to drill a hole. Then I'm gonna set my router table up so that my, uh, uh, my bearing bit just goes through and, uh, <coughs> and cuts out the, uh, the bottom piece here. But I wanna make sure that I go low enough as to not, uh, not go into my wiring race here. All right, there's the hole. And as you can see, it goes through the other side. All right, so now, all that's left to do is do it again. I tell y'all what, if Mr. Jones, my junior high shop teacher, saw me reaching in like that, I'd get licks that day. <laughs> okay, now let's do it to the lefty. Wait, to the righty. pretty good. I'm just going to uh, go around some of these fuzzies with a piece of uh, 220 grit sandpaper. Not because I need to, because you will know, uh, no doubt realize that this side is where the, um, uh, the control cavity cover is going to go, but sometimes you guys, my OCD kicks in and uh, yeah. So I'll do that to the the glue side too, cause, cause why not? I think it's, I think it's gonna be cool. Okay, so um, we've got all of the, uh, all of the stuff done that I want to have done before I, um, before I glue my top on. Okay, and that's what I want to talk to you guys about next. Now, someone's gonna ask. Hey Matt, how come you're not putting the control cavity recesses in? Um, and I did say that I was gonna do that. The reason I'm not gonna do that is, um, believe it or not, once we glue our maple onto here, um, it can start to move around, you know, because you're using water-based glue. And um, just because this is flat and just because the maple is flat, um, doesn't mean that it won't move around a little bit. And I know what you're thinking. Well, how can that be? I mean, that, that wood is so thick and so big, it's not going to start cupping or, or, or doing anything. Well, it, it probably won't, but I've seen it happen. And so if I have my control cavity covers on here and they're the right thickness, and I need to, for whatever reason, take a little bit off of this side, and re-flatten it, um, then my control cavity covers are gonna have to be recut anyway. So I figure, why don't we just re, you know, cut them one time and, and have it be right. 
Okay, guys, so we've got our, uh, let's see, this is our uh, right hand and our left hand. I've been told this sort of looks like a dong. Um, but what this actually is, is uh, again, the uh, switch control cavity, or control cavity, a wire race, and the potentiometer control cavity. And again, my right hand and my left hand, uh, Les Paul bodies, are, are the same. They went through the shot. Uh, Thickness sander exactly the same. I did all the stuff to them, so they're a mirror image or whatever the whatever that is. Um, and the cool part about it, guys, is these uh, little quarter inch pins. I can uh, I can put a template back on. I can put it on upside down and do the lefty one. If I wanted to do um, uh, P90s, I can. Uh, if I wanted to do humbuckers, I can. If I wanted to do again the double cutaway or the no cutaway. This one has the, uh, uh, looks like the control cavity cover uh, recess as well as the humbucker um, uh, screw positions. So these templates, guys, are absolutely the cool setup. And we're going to do some more videos using the templates and using these bodies. But I got one other super cool thing to show you that I wish I had when I built my first Les Paul. Okay, I don't know how much of this you guys can see. This is actually a carved top. This is a maple top. It's a carved top. It's flat on the back and it's ready to glue in. And of course, it has the same off-body alignment pins. So dig this. I can put this on. Ugh. I can glue this down, put it on there, and then clamp all the way around. I'm actually going to put this in my, uh, my bearing press and squeeze all squeeze the life out of it. I might put a couple screws where the pickups are just to kind of lock it down in place there. But this is a, this is this is something that Steve offers right now. So they work with his templates. It's really excellent. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, that kind of takes a lot of the fun out of it. It's already done. Remember when I was telling you that I asked Steve for a couple of custom custom pieces. Get a load of this. It's the, uh, the classic step template. Uh, so if you don't want the, uh, the already done version, you can get the, uh, the steps and uh, you can get it with either the cutaway uh, already there or in this case, this is going to be a left-handed one like I was telling you for uh, Caesar from Los Lobos. And um, so it's, it's actually gonna be this, this way. So, and again, it's got the, um, the off-body alignment pins. Let me show you what that's gonna look like. And then I'm going to do the carve the old school way with um, grinders and sanders and little planes and I can't see. All right, so I'm gonna line, line that one up there and line that one up there and it fits snug. And the off-body alignment pins are gonna keep the top from squirming around when I glue it down. So, um, and then of course I can put this template back on and cut it out and, and that's why it's actually still flat on the um, on all the way around. So when you go to cut it out, you're not dealing with the curve. But it's got uh, basically your, uh, your neck profile is mostly done. Um, your, uh, your carve top, your bell carve stuff is mostly there. Um, it's how you would do it the old school way and then you would do it, uh, you would do the rest of it by hand. Or like I said, gang, you can't Oh, the Les Paul is not a light guitar. Or you can get Steve to do you one of these that's, um, that's already carved. Um, so I, uh, I, I, I asked Steve to make me one that was already carved so I could give it a try. And I asked him for this one because we are going to be offering this as our um, uh, Build a Classic carved top. And you'll get this top and you'll do everything that we did to the mahogany uh, when you get out to the shop and then you'll glue this down and you'll get to do the carve the old school way, just like the, um, uh, you know, you could probably, we could, we could set up the, um, the copy carver or more to the point, what we'll probably do is we'll give everyone a grinder and a sander and we'll just sort of let you guys go for it. So um, this, these, the template sets and these tops, whether you go with the already carved one or if you go with, you know, a little more, um, a little more of the uh, DIY carve, 
guys, I wish, I wish I had this stuff when I was attempting my first Les Paul, and now you guys have it. Um, so what a remarkable age we live in, right? Uh, building your own Les Paul is going to be tricky. Uh, well, no, building your own Les Paul is considerably less tricky than it was for Chris Deering uh, when he built the Appetite for Destruction in 1959, Les Paul in 1986, or whatever year it was. So, um, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you uh, want to get in touch with Steve at Maximum Guitar Works, link in the description below. I'm going to do some more videos and show you guys how this stuff works because, um, well, one, I want to show you how it works, uh, but more importantly, I want to make sure that everything's ready for the uh, workshop when uh, people come out to that. If you want to come out to the shop and do one of these, guys, get in on the action. It is a lot of fun. I guarantee you, you'll have a good time. You'll have, you'll have more than a good time, and you'll be building an heirloom instrument. That's kind of what you you can do when you come out to Texas Toast Guitars and build your own carved top or classic fender or you want to shoot from the hip and make something that's all unique and, and special to you. So uh, if you like the video, give me the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, click the subscribe button. If you appreciate content like this, go over to our Patreon page or join on YouTube. Help us out because even a buck a month goes a long way to bring this, bringing you guys need stuff like this. If you can't do that though, right now there's no paywall. Um, but I do have neat stuff available on Patreon and YouTube members uh, only, like for example, my acoustic bill, all that stuff. Oh, I've got some neck through stuff on there too. All that stuff is on Patreon and YouTube member uh, exclusive videos. You can check out all that stuff. So um, guys, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And then um, until I talk to you next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself, start your own YouTube channel. That's what I did. We'll see you guys next time. Have a great week. I wanna play my guitar the only way I